。当灾害发生时，建筑物迅速倒塌，被废墟掩埋的人能否存活下来？神奇的生命三角形是什么？它又是怎样让被困者逃过一劫的呢？科技博览即将播出。在现代城市中，一旦发生地震等自然灾害时，密集的建筑群和高楼大厦势必会给城市居民带来不可估量的危险。数万吨的钢筋铁架交错悬在空中，大量的水泥横梁及柱子失去支撑，倒塌下来，无数生命被埋葬在废墟之中。因此，在这里灾害发生时，死亡人数最多的是在室内的人们。When buildings collapse, 98 percent of the people, sometimes 100 percent, of the people who are in those buildings are killed. I want to tell you very simple information: that 90 percent to 100 percent of people will survive. 这位就是曾经担任过美国国际搜救队的首席救援员道格。他曾经和来自六十多个不同国家的各种救援小组参与过全世界很多次重大灾害的救援工作。道格经历过多种灾害，包括地震、台风等等带来的建筑倒塌后的救援工作，可以说是身经百战。面对众多严重受损的楼房和被废墟掩埋的生命，道格向我们介绍了一些当遇到房屋倒塌的时候，人们应该如何安全避险。If you're in a bar and you're at having a party and you're in a bar, always in every bar, when they collapse, the bar counter has a safe space. In all along the front of the bar, because the ceiling comes down, it rests on top of the bar, and when the ceiling hits the floor, it makes a triangle. So right next to the bar, always safe. 道格所说的三角区究竟是什么呢？它怎么就能成为安全区呢？原来，当屋顶和墙壁倒塌时，室内较大而坚固的物体将会成为一个支撑点。这样一来，坍塌的屋顶或墙壁与地面就会自然形成一个三角形的状态，因此会给被困人员留下一个生存空间。所以说，当房屋倒塌时，屋内较大而坚固的物体旁边便成为了被困人员得以存活的藏身之处。Oh. You understand? Okay. This is next to. This is next to. Oh. This is next to. Oh,、uh, and that's the next to. This is yes, and this is under. Oh. You understand? At least you have four next. Yeah. Okay. You understand? Uh huh. Listen, why is it called triangle life? Ask me this question. Why is it called triangle life? I call it triangle light because that's where the light people are.、Mm. Why do I call it triangle? Because it's a triangle.、Mm. I go in the buildings. There's triangles everywhere. You look at the buildings. Triangle, 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 triangle. 生命三角区被多年从事救援工作的道格所倡导。这个说法主要是来自于他在二十三年前参加的一次救援行动中。The very first school, the very first building of the 894 I went into, the very first one was a school in Mexico City in 1985. And when I went inside of that school, I crawled up and down the aisles between the rows of desks. And underneath the desks, all the desks, the legs snapped and they were squashed down to about this high. But as I crawled up and down the aisles. Maybe a little hand would be sticking out. Maybe a little foot. But the children were all squashed to this thick. Their skulls were smashed from the weight above. And I said, "Why aren't these children in the aisles?" 生命三角区这个说法对于身材小的人很有效。
。此外，他还打破了常规式的求生方法。就是在房屋即将倒塌时，人们躲在桌子底下和床铺下避险的方法，这是为什么呢？道格早在一九九六年就和土耳其政府一起合作逃逃生的科学方法，通过土耳其政府的协助，实验单位将爆破一栋废弃的大楼，模拟建筑物倒塌的情形。工作人员在桌子、床铺旁边放置了十具人体模型，同样也在桌子、床铺下面放置了十具人体模型来做一次对比实验。当炸药引爆后，大楼立刻变成了残垣断壁。道格和搜救队员们找到那二十具人体模型，在桌子和床铺下的十具人体模型，有八具被压得面目全非。其中一具甚至头身脚断成三节，而放置在桌子、床铺旁边的十具人体模型则全部安然无恙。这究竟是怎么回事呢？其实，当建筑物因强烈震动倒塌时，楼板及横梁会将桌子、床铺等家具压毁，人如果躲在其中，后果不堪设想。如果人们以低姿势躲在坚固的家具旁，家具可以支撑倒下来的楼板及横梁，形成一个三角形，让躲在家具旁边的人获得生存空间。这个实验充分说明了在房屋倒塌时，人们不要躲在桌下避险的道理。The earthquake happens. We're here. We're watching TV. And we're talking. How are you? And we're watching TV. And then now, now let's go. You go. Okay. And you go like this, and you put your back against there,、mm -hmm. and you bring your legs close together like、mm -hmm. this, and then you cover your head and keep your head as close in here as possible like this. Perfect. And then the ceiling will come down. It will hit here, and then over here somewhere. Okay. So in here we'll be safe. 另外，道格还介绍说。如果人们在车里遇到建筑物倒塌时，千万不要留在车内，要尽快离开车子，以免垮下来的建筑物压扁汽车，造成伤害。如果您正在停车场，应该以卧姿躲在车旁，建筑物塌落在车上不会直接压到人，可能形成一个单角形的生存空间，增加存活机会。灾难降临时，许多人因为没有掌握正确的自救方法而被倒塌的建筑物掩埋，不幸丧命。然而，也有一部分人幸运地发现了生命三角，赢得了生存的机会。最重要的是，大家要在灾难发生时保持冷静的头脑，不要慌乱。建筑物的倒塌是在瞬间完成的，所以冷静的头脑对寻找合适的藏身点非常重要。如果不幸被废墟埋压，要尽量保持冷静，设法自救。无法脱险时，要保存体力，寻找水和食物，创造生存条件，耐心等待救援。作为救援专家，道格目睹了很多在灾难中不幸遇难的人们，同时他也看到了在废墟形成的三角区里幸存的生命。他心中有一个愿望，不单单是帮助那些遭受灾难的人们，更重要的是将这些自救知识传播给孩子们，让他们从小就能掌握正确的自救本领。在遇到灾难发生的时候，能够冷静的去求生自救。目前，一些自然灾害虽然是人类无法避免和控制的，可是当灾害来临的时候，我们只要能够掌握正确的自救方法，还是可以在灾难中将死亡的数量降到最低。